Why should we fire Congress? Because they use the Constitution of the United States as a scrap of paper. They swear an oath to follow it, and then they reject it. That was their employment document. They haven't followed it. Congressmen, senators, you're fired. Washington, you're fired! Washington, you're fired. Washington, D.C., you're fired. I work with Republicans and Democrats to get things done. If I was asked to sit down with the president, vice president, their staff, Congress, and the Senate, and why would I give them their walking papers? It would be basically be this. They are not serving the interests of the people at large anymore. When the Founding Fathers created the country, they didn't start with the Constitution. They finished with the Constitution. They started with the change. They started with getting the people in power who were causing problems out of power. The founders of this country weren't particularly interested in political parties. They called them the factions and they thought they would be the destruction of, of the country. Firstly, I would get rid of every lobbyist in these United States. No more lobbyists. We have got to hold Congress feet to the fire. They are the only government entity authorized to declare war on another nation. I don't know why we're there. I think it's a lie. It has nothing to do with 9-11. I think our government needs one big enema from the top to the bottom. A lot of people in this country are under the false impression that we have two political parties. Well, there is very little difference between the Democrats and Republicans. These Democrats that were elected last night are conservative Democrats. Republican impersonations. What's an Arnold Republican? Well, it's basically being fiscally conservative, uh, being uh, socially moderate, and, uh, you know, being in environmentally progressive. So I've been telling you that I believe people cast their vote for something, not against it. Evangelical Christians turned out in droves, driven in part by a desire to support a flurry of constitutional amendments banning same-sex marriage, health care, border security, national security, and the economy on the war in Iraq, abortion. I see Democrats attacking Republicans for their weird sex life. You know, ultimately, Tucker, I don't think it ends up changing any votes. Sectarian violence. Democrats are divided. The withdrawal of American forces from Iraq. A precipitous withdrawal would be injurious to the United States. I think, I think most people agree agree with that. The one thing that's not credible, as the National Review pointed out, is stay the course. It's true that Republican leadership put our country in this mess, but let's not forget that both Republicans and Democrats signed their names to bills that killed the U.S. Constitution. Both parties have jointly put our Bill of Rights in jeopardy, and now they want your vote. You've probably heard it said that voters don't go to the polls to vote against something. They go there to vote for something. So what are you going there to vote for? Abortion, gas prices, gay marriage, social security, taxes, health care, immigration? Well, guess what? The people of this country have a decision to make. And let me just lay it out for you. We no longer have the luxury of bringing our social issues with us into the voting booths. Whether you're a man or a woman, gay or straight, conservative, liberal, or otherwise, from this point forward, when you go to the ballot box to cast your vote, you'll either be voting for freedom or against it. It's that simple. Our social issues in this country have been completely overshadowed by an increasingly tyrannical ideology growing from within our own political system. This infection began with the Republicans, but our problem stems from the fact that it didn't end with our Democrats. If we hope to rescue our Republic, all of our attention, all of our efforts, must be concentrated on repairing the damage done to our Constitution over the past decade. If you can find a Democrat or a Republican who can do that, then by all means, I encourage you to vote for them. Americans have been led to believe that they only have two choices to vote for a Republican or to vote for a Democrat. Any deviation is met with certain claims of wasting your vote. Well, let me ask you a question. If voting for a Republican or a Democrat yields the same disastrous blow to the U.S. Bill of Rights, aren't you wasting your vote anyway? We need leaders who will observe the rule of law and leave all of the interpretations to the judiciary branch of our government. 
This country needs men and women who will put the rights of the sovereign people over the privileges of corporations and power grabs by presidents. We must have political candidates who will stand before the American people and pledge that they will go to Washington and fight for the restoration of our civil liberties. And then we need them to go to Washington and with the utmost conviction make their promises a reality. When the citizens of this country finally wake up and realize the constitutional crisis that we are in, then and only then will we see men and women of true character and true honor racing to meet the test of history. Our only criteria for these offices of public servants is that they uphold their oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Is that truly so difficult? Run for office. Office, uh, we live in a representative government. Attorneys do not represent us. Big businessmen do not represent the people. The people represent the people. Construction workers represent the people. Small businesses, mom and pop stores, those represent the people. If you don't think you're qualified, are you one of the people? If you're the people, you can represent the people. Our elected officials are not representative of us. I don't want to see elected officials in suits and ties who know somebody who can get them tickets to the Redskins game. I want an elected official who is my neighbor. I want people in government who are making decisions as as a job in addition to the fact that they're a citizen in their in their neighborhood, they 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 volunteer in their in their communities. They are a fa they're, they're friends and family. That's who, sh who you should be electing to Congress, not professional politicians. It's, I also volunteer for um, Ed Perlmutter, who is running for Congress from my district. And part of the reason I'm working for him is because when the elections were coming up, I knew I wanted to get involved politically. I don't see the uh, the future the future uh, establishment of common sense in this country uh, being the result of the creation of a third party or any of the existing parties. I think really, and rather, that the solution has to be uh, people separating themselves from their blind loyalty to their party and beginning to be more uh, responsive to their own conscience as individuals, rather than what's good for the party, what's good for the tribe, what's good for the race, becoming uh, answerable to what is true, what is right, and what is just. 70% of this population is opposed to the f war in Iraq. And at the same time, we've got someone who's literally declared himself a dictator. He said, I am the decider, which isn't necessarily a word, but it's a position. Americans are refusing to give terrorists the power. What are we going to do in order to bring back the Constitution of the United States? There are some very good historical figures that have told us what to do. The main one is Samuel Adams. And that is that it does not take a majority to prevail, but an irate, vocal minority intent upon setting brush fires in the minds of men. If we can do this, we can take back our Constitution.